Hello, good afternoon, Old Donation. It's definitely afternoon now because it took us so long to get set up in the right place. Um, I apologize for a late start. I had this, uh, this setting all ready to go in another, in our studio setup. And then when I listened to the feed, I realized it was chopping. The music was chopping, which is what we used to get in here. And so uh, I figured, let's just run to the church and do it as we normally do it. So Whew. next week, next week, we'll be uh, in we'll Jerusalem. Be, we'll be in Jerusalem <laughs> next year in Jerusalem. It'll be next week in Jerusalem. So we're, uh, we're making progress with lots of things, but... Uh, like all this whole year has been, uh, we, we make our way through chaos, and yet we still persevere. So here we are. We'll do noonday prayers, and the uh, psalm is number 114 when we come to that point, right? Right. Psalm 114. Good. And so, it's found on page 756 Good. if you're using a prayer book. So let's start with the order of noonday service, uh, service for noonday on page 103. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the, the Father, Father, to the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, now and, and will be, be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. And now and Psalm 114. Psalm 114 begins with hallelujah. All right. Hallelujah. When Israel came out of Egypt... The house of Jacob from a people of strange speech. Judah became God's sanctuary. And Israel his dominion. The sea beheld it and fled. Jordan turned and went back. The mountains skipped like rams. And the little hills like young sheep. What ailed you, O sea, that you fled? O Jordan, that you turned back? You mountains that you skipped like rams. You little hills like young sheep. Tremble, O earth, at the presence of the Lord. At the presence of the God of Jacob. Who turned the hard rock into a pool of water. And flintstone into a flowing spring. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, Father, and to the, the Son, Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Spirit as, as it was, was in the beginning, beginning is now, now and, and will, will be, be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. That uh, psalm reflected the exodus Yes, Story. yes, yes, for sure. And, and it I, also, I love the uh, uh, God made <clears throat> Jacob his sanctuary is uh, sort of a harbinger of what's to come in, in the gospel in reading. In the gospel reading, they're, they're well connected. Um, we're going to continue looking at the uh, road to Emmaus story in, in Luke's account of the resurrection. Mm -hmm. And we uh, finished yesterday with the... Um, we had some conversation about the women had visited the tomb right. and believed what they saw and heard. And some of these folks um, were disillusioned and left town. Right. They're walking up a dusty road and um, Jesus, whom they don't recognize as Jesus, joins alongside them on the road. And the last thing they had said were, you know, they were disappointed that they thought the Messiah That's right. had come. They thought their um, redemption right. was in Jesus, but no, he's died, and not only has he died, we can't even find his body. Right. Just yep. a completely different perspective. But um, let's continue with that story. We had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it's now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women in our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then Jesus said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses 
and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? Yes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is part of the revelation that Jesus gives them as, uh, as they're walking together that they don't quite get. And yet, as he starts to explain scriptures, how would it be to have Jesus do Bible study with you? I mean, come on. <laughs> I mean, what a, what a wonderful blessing it is. They're walking on the road, and in the midst of their grief, Jesus comes, but he doesn't just come but he sees their condition, mm-hmm. and then he helps them understand what's happened by way of digging into the Scriptures so they can see their story in the great story that God has given them. Right, right. It's, uh, it really supports the, the Jewish Jesus. We can't get to this point right. without you the history to, of Israel. That's right. right. To fully understand who Jesus is, you really have to dig into the Old Testament Mm -hmm. to understand the prophecies, the story of God continuing to reach out to Israel and to try to give them that position of being the the revelators, the ones who will tell the rest of the world about God's love and their purpose on earth. And so, you know, I remember uh, someone in seminary saying, wouldn't it be great if they could have written down in Luke all the proofs? Right. <laughs> <laughs> we're, always, we're always trying to understand right. what is it that led the early Christian church to understand fully who Jesus was. Right. And it's all based on the re- re- resurrection, but then there are all these clues throughout the Old Testament. And you can spend your lifetime reading through the Old Testament and coming to understand what God has been doing that leads to this point. That's one of the difficulties on Sunday morning when we hear the lectionary and we hear the Old Testament reading. That's in there. Yeah. But we don't always hear it because that's not what we're looking to hear. We talked about that yesterday. Right. You hear what you are What you're tuned to to hearing and what you expect to hear. What you expect to hear. And and so this is... So that's the predicament that they were in. That's their predicament. And Jesus comes and says, whatever your difficulty is, whatever your situation is, you can actually find the answers to that. In the Old Testament. It was there. In the Old Testament. All the words were there. If you could have seen it. Right. And and now in the light of the resurrection... Jesus explains how all these things make sense when you add them all up together. Even though the disciples started disillusioned, Mm -hmm. Jesus says, don't remain in your disillusionment. Mm -hmm. Now try to understand why it is that this is true and what it means for you. Right. Right. And there's such a foundation of the Exodus story in here. They're exiting Jerusalem. They're on right on the road. Yep. They're um, on their departure, the exodus right. of leaving Jerusalem, and they're actually on an exodus to freedom. Yeah. But yeah. they have to know it. It's a <laughs> so it's it's really a fantastic story, and it's part of this whole the road to Emmaus really has the gospel. It has the gospel. All yeah. all sitting within it. So yes. um it's a wonderful, wonderful story. And I'll bet you and Mary might open it up again tomorrow and, and we'll, see the rest of it. We'll see the rest of it. It'll be the... Uh, the time at table. The time at table. Okay. So we won't take away from any of that tomorrow. Uh, just, uh, so let's back, get back to our prayers. Sounds good. Okay. So on page 106, Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Our Father in heaven... 
hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. Lord, hear our prayer. And let our cry come to you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, send your Holy Spirit into our hearts to direct and rule us according to your will, to comfort us in all our afflictions, to defend us from all error, and lead us into all truth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we invite your intercessions or thanksgiving silently, aloud, or typing them into Facebook. And today uh, we have... Um, Oh, geez, I opened up the birthdays before I opened up the prayer list, so let me get back to the prayer list. Uh, We continue our prayers for Joe Gallup. Um, He is now totally on uh, ventilator, and uh, and they're giving him life support to keep him through this period. Uh, Martha Tompkins is recovering and doing nicely, but, um, but can't get out and stand as long as she used to. Margaret and Jesse Britton are recovering from covid Kevin Campbell from pancreatic cancer. They're working on that. Our deacon Genevieve is making progress. Uh, this morning, we understand that they took out the, uh, the uh, tube from her uh, for breathing, so, so she's in better shape there. And we're hoping that after a couple days more in the hospital, she will be able to go home. Uh, we've had people from around the diocese and all the nation. Thank you, Dan and Nancy Reese and, uh, and Gretchen Hood for visiting Genevieve and spending time with her. And um, we're trying to keep them, both Wayne and Genevieve, um, in good shape. Um, Kurt, Katie Byrne, John Harris, Yvette Gormley, Pat Benton, Sid Kilgore, Danny Swift, Patricia Cook, Shannon Briotti. Dean Rogers, Emily and Kim McInnes, Sarah Hill, Ruth Rudolph, Rick and Robert Williamson, Mike, Cindy, Arden, Carvel, Jessica, Stan, Hope, Brian and Heather, Meredith, Julius, Howard, Amy, Pam, Ruth Ann, Donna, Frank, Kelly, Gabe, and Gio, Alan and Carol. And for God's vision of a beloved community to become our vision for this world, for peace and justice in this nation and world, for deployed personnel everywhere, for medical and emergency personnel, for scientists working on solutions for COVID-19 and distribution of vaccines. And we give thanks especially for Arun Iyer, who is uh, heading up the FEMA operation to distribute vaccines over at Military Highway with Macy's, and I understand that that they are now accepting people over 16. Uh, minors have to bring your guardian, but you can just walk in and get shots on some schedule there. So, um, so that's a real blessing. And um, and we have some birthdays. We have some birthdays: Anya Shavest, uh, Doris Crouch, Melody Wheaton, and Meredith Miller. All right. Just okay. a slew of birthdays. Very today cool. Yeah. Anaya, mm-hmm. I remember when she was this big, and I did her baptism back here. Really? But now she's this big. Yeah. So <laughs> well. that happens. <laughs> well. Oh, boy. Little, little girls and little boys become uh, men and women before our very eyes. Pretty quickly. And, uh, so happy birthday, Anaya and Meredith and all those others. So. It's a, it's a big day. No okay. anniversaries, and uh, I think we covered it I think it we now. covered it all. And tomorrow, uh, Fred and Mary will be back, and because uh, Mary showed up last night, right? Mary finally got home. Yep, that's good. And so, so we will be with you. And I hope you have a blessed week the rest of the week. And right now, the... The uh, weather keeps changing as far as what the Sunday forecast is. We're hoping for a beautiful sunny morning. It could be very warm. It could be in the high 70s. And with any luck, we won't have rain during the service and we'll be fine. So look for your weather uh, prognosticators and say your prayers. And we'll give you an announcement on Saturday morning about what we'll do. Okay? Hope for the best. And... 
Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia. See you tomorrow.